For what purpose does the gentlelady from Hawaii seek recognition? Madam Speaker, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment offered by Ms. Hanabusa of Hawaii, page 88, after line 2, insert the following. Native Hawaiian Housing Block Grant, including transfer of funds. For the Native Hawaiian Housing Block Grant program, as authorized under Title VIII of the Native American Housing Assistance and Self-Determination Act of 1996, $13 million to remain available until expended, which amount shall be derived for, by transfer from the amount provided in this title under Management and Administration, Administration Operations and Management for the, for the Office of the Chief Human Capital Officer. For what purpose does the gentleman from Iowa seek recognition? Uh, Madam Chairman, I reserve a point of order on the gentlewoman's amendment. A point of order is reserved. For what purpose does the gentlelady from Hawaii seek recognition? I, I would like to speak in support of the amendment. The gentlelady is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I yield myself as much time as I may need. Without my, objection. Thank you, Madam Speaker. My amendment inserts the amount of $13 million for the Native Hawaiian Housing Block Grant. This is in line with the President's budget. The President provided for the same amount and states that the Native Hawaiian Block Grant is authorized under Title VIII of the Native American Housing Assistance and Self-Determination Act of 1996, easier called NAHASDA. The block grant authorizes an annual grant to the Department of Hawaiian Homelands for housing and housing-related assistance. Madam Speaker, let us understand the significance of this block grant to this Congress and the nation. In 1921, the Congress passed into law the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act. Congress recognized that it was necessary to return Native Hawaiians to their land to support self-sufficiency, the preservation of their values, traditions, and culture. Madam Speaker, at the time, 1893, where the Queen was overthrown, you know, Hawaii was a vibrant, modern nation. And what happened after the overthrow resulted in the need, and Congress saw the need, that we needed to look at the return of Native Hawaiians to their land. In essence, a trust relationship was created by the creation of the Hawaiian Homes Comm Commission Act. The Hawaiian Homes Commission Act made very clear that only Hawaiians of 50% blood quantum qualified, that the lands could only be leased, not owned, and it also restricted the ability to mortgage and had occupancy restrictions as well. This block grant assists in fulfilling the special trust relationship which was created and acknowledged in the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act. It ensures the return to the land of Native Hawaiians, which was the concern of Congress. It, if this provision is authorized and, and, and people vote for it, what it will do is it will permit the existing and ongoing projects, along with those planned, to be completed with the ultimate goal of putting Native Hawaiians on the land, which was the purpose of the trust relationship that we created in the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act of 1921. Madam Speaker, I yield back the balance of my time. The gentlelady yields back the balance of her time. For what purpose does a gentleman from Iowa seek recognition? Uh, Madam Chairman, I make a point of order against the amendment because it provides an appropriation for an unauthorized program and therefore violates Clause 2 of Rule 21. Clause 2 of Rule 21 states in pertinent part, an appropriation may not be in order as an amendment for an expenditure not previously authorized by law. Madam Chairman, the amendment proposes to appropriate funds for a program that has not been authorized. The amendment therefore violates Clause 2, Rule 21, and I ask for a ruling of the Chair. Does any member seek recognition to be heard on the point of order? Madam Speaker, I seek The gentlelady is recognized. Madam Speaker, I understand the point of order that has been raised, but let me, um, with all due respect, say that when we look at the language of any rule, the rules, the language that is, I guess, the suspect here is not previously authorized by law. In fact, as stated by the President, as well as in my amendment, this provision has been authorized by law, and it is found in Nahasda, Title VIII. When we look at the wording, not previously authorized, the technical agree argument may be that it was authorized at some point in time, and then 
expired in 2005. However, that is not what the rule says. The rule says not previously authorized, and this has been previously authorized. In the recent United States Supreme Court case of Lamey versus U.S. Trustee, it's very clear, and we can borrow from the Supreme Court when it gives its, its opinion as to what it means. The plain language is what controls in any interpretation of any statute or any rule. It is clearly plain language that what is being referred to here is, is the fact that it was not previously authorized and it has been previously authorized. In addition to that, I would also like to say that there is an exception to this rule that says that you can continue appropriations for public works and objects that are already in progress. And to that, Madam Speaker, I point out that as we have said, this money is used for the return of the Native Hawaiians to the lands, and it includes, of course, construction and public works. There are projects ongoing that need this money in Kakaina, Waimanalo, P.E. Lani Mai Keka, Phase 2, and Anahola on the island of Kauai, in Laopua on the, island, on the big island in the Kona side, Lalamilo in Waimea, Kanehili in Kapolei, and East Kapolei too, also in Kapolei, Kapolei being on the island of Oahu. So on this point of order, Madam Speaker, I believe that it has been misinterpreted. The words are not previously authorized, and in addition to that, and this, and this specific provision has been authorized, and in addition to that, the exception is for public works projects in progress, and the public works projects are the ones that I have listed, which as we know is the object of the grant, of the Native Hawaiian Housing Block Grant. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Lady yields back. Do any other members wish uh, to seek time in the, uh, Madam Chairman. on the point of order? And from Iowa is uh, Yeah, I will insist on my point of order. The fact of the matter is this program is not currently authorized. There are on, no ongoing public works uh, in progress, and uh, so uh, once again, I would insist on my point of order. The gentleman yields back. The proponent of an item of appropriation carries the burden of persuasion on the question whether it is supported by an authorization in law. Having reviewed the amendment and entertained arguments on the point of order, the chair is unable to conclude that the item of appropriation in question is authorized by law. An authorization that has lapsed does not qualify under the rule. The chair is therefore constrained to sustain the point of order under Clause 2A of Rule 21. The amendment is not in order.